Welcome to WeatherTrack mobile app version 3.2. When you first open the app and log in, you're presented with a list of all of the sites that you manage on the sites page. If you manage multiple accounts, you'll see the list of sites that make up each account listed underneath the account name. The site that's nearest to you is always listed at the top if you have GPS enabled. The simple button layout comprises of a large button on the left that contains the site name, controller count, and if there are any major or minor alerts associated to the site. And a smaller select button can be found on the right. Pressing a site button takes you to the site's overview page. The site overview page will show you at the top a map or a street view image of the site. Beneath that, you'll have the current weather and a seven day forecast. And at the bottom, you'll see a summary list of the controller modes and alert types. Returning to the sites page, let's choose a site. We do that by choosing the select button to the right of the site. I'll choose Red Rock HOA. This takes you to the controllers page. At the top, you'll see the controller that's nearest to you if you have GPS enabled. And beneath that are all of the controllers that make up that site. Similar to the sites page, the controller page button layout is made up of a large button on the left that contains each controller name and serial number, along with an icon showing you the current status of that controller. An alert count can also be seen. As with the sites page, the select button can be found on the right. To view the settings page for any given controller, simply press the settings page button. The first thing you're presented with is the active alerts page. In this example, there are no active alerts for this controller. However, after selecting a different controller, you can see this one has some active alerts associated with it. If you wanna know more about a specific alert, just select it and then you'll be provided with more details about that alert. In addition, there's a video you can watch to get you up to speed. At the bottom of the active alerts page, you can clear the flow alerts, clear electrical alerts, or clear both the flow and electrical alerts by pressing the appropriate button. And you can also sort the alert list by newest, by oldest, or by severity. To the right of active alerts is percentage adjust. It presents you with a list of stations associated to the selected controller. To make a change, simply select a station, choose a new percentage adjust value, and the controller will be updated. To the right of percentage adjust, you'll find rain pause. To create a rain pause, select the rain pause button, select the amount of days you'd like the rain pause to last, and the display will be updated, displaying when the rain pause will end and when scheduled irrigation will resume. To cancel a rain pause, select the rain pause button, choose zero days, and scheduled irrigation will resume. Next, you'll find master valve override. Select the master valve override button, choose the length of time you'd like the master valve to be overridden for, and the display will update, showing you the selected time, which will begin to count down. You can cancel at any time by selecting the master valve override button once again, selecting zero minutes, and then the display will reflect that the master valve override is inactive. And lastly, if you manage an OptiFlow enable controller, you can lock or unlock it via the app. Beneath the unlock lock button, you'll see a list of controllers that would be affected by this action. Let's select the unlock lock button, choose a period of time we'd like the controller to be unlocked for, and the display will update showing you the time you chose and begin counting down. And to lock the controller back, choose the unlock lock button and lock controller. Regardless of what tab you have selected, you'll always find controller mode at the top right of the screen. To change the controller mode for the selected controller, press the button, choose either on, off, winterized, or shutdown. I'll choose shutdown. The change in mode will soon be reflected. Back on the controllers page, to see a list of stations that make up a controller, press the select button to the right of the controller that you want to work with and you'll be presented with a list of stations that make up that controller. The three tabs at the top of the screen are single, 
multiple, and program, and they each serve a slightly different purpose. Let's start with single. And off to the right, there are timer buttons adjacent to each station. To manually operate a station, select its timer button, and then press start. But let's say we'd like it to run longer than the two minutes that you see here. I can do that by going to the default timer button at the top of the row, choose a new time, and that time is reflected. Any other timer button that's selected will also show the new default time. Let's change it back to two minutes, and you'll see two minutes is updated, and regardless of which station I select, it will run for two minutes. Let's start station number four. While station number four is running, let's say I'd like to choose another station. I can do that by simply scrolling to the station that I'd like to operate. Let's go down to station number 11, press its timer button, and after a short delay, station 11 will begin to operate. When you select another station, at any time during the blinking of the timer button, you can press it again to cancel the operation. And of course, you can use the up and down arrow buttons at the bottom on either side of the stop button to either advance forwards or backwards. And at any time, you can stop irrigating by pressing the stop button. On the multiple tab, you can select a group of stations to run either in stacked, meaning one at a time, or overlap mode, meaning sequentially or all at once. In this example, I'll start by selecting four stations via the timer buttons to their right. I'll then go to the default timer at the top of the row, and I'll choose a new time of six minutes. Then select a couple more stations. Because this is an OptiFlow enabled controller, I have the ability to either run in stacked or overlap mode. Stacked means each station will run one after another, and if I go to overlap mode, these selected stations will all run at the same time. If your controller is not OptiFlow enabled, these buttons will be hidden and stacked mode will be the only option. Let's return to stacked mode and press the next button. And you'll see that the selected stations have now been aggregated together onto a single screen. While on this page, you can select the timer button for any of the stations and change the duration. Let's go ahead and do that. I'll select station number five's timer button and I'll change it to 10 minutes. Then I'll select station number 11 and change that to three minutes. And then station number 13's timer button and I'll change that to two minutes. You can also change the order of the stations by simply dragging and dropping. I'll select and continue to press down on one of the stations and then I'll just drag it into a new position. We'll select station number 13 and we'll drag it up to the second slot. We'll press and drag station number six and let's drag it to the bottom. This order might make more logical sense depending on how they're wired up at the controller. I'll go ahead and press start. And as expected, station two starts watering. When it's finished, it'll move on to 13, station four, 11, station five, and then finish up at station number six. Back on the multiple tab of the station page, I have the exact same station selected as before, but now we'll take a look at overlap. I'll press the overlap button at the bottom. When I change modes, a new system capacity bar shows up at the bottom of the screen. Weather track controllers come with a powerful transformer, which means you can run up to nine stations at the same time on a single controller. In this case, I've selected six stations of the nine available. I'll press the next button, which takes us to a screen that shows us the six selected stations, where I can go ahead and press start all. And since this is an OptiFlow enabled controller, all six stations begin to run simultaneously. And whatever page I navigate to on this site, I'll see the currently watering bar at the bottom of the screen. This tells us how many stations are watering on this currently selected site. If I select it, it takes me to the currently watering page where I can see all six stations operating. You can stop individual stations by pressing their stop button on the right, or you can press the stop all button to cease all irrigation. I'll navigate over to the other controller on this site. I'll select it. Then I'll go to the multiple tab We'll choose several stations on this controller. 
I'll switch over to overlap mode, then press the next button. Then I'll hit start all. So now in addition to the six stations we already have watering, we've added four more. And as expected, if we navigate over to the currently watering page, we'll see all 10 stations listed with their controllers as the header, each with their own separate stop button. I can stop all the stations from watering by pressing stop all. We've added some exciting new features found in the settings page for each station. And to get to that, just simply select the station setting button for the station that you'd like to access. I'll select station number one. At the top of the screen, there are a few things to pay attention to. On the far left, you see the place button in orange, a green start button, and then the timer button on the far right. You can now manually operate stations directly from the station programming page. Let's change the runtime by selecting the top right timer button, and then we'll select two minutes instead of one. I'll go ahead and press the start button and station one will begin operating. Now that we've had an opportunity to see the station in operation, we're gonna make a few tweaks to the programming. I'll update the percentage adjust for this station, changing it to negative 5% and save that by pressing the apply button. We can see the currently watering bar at the bottom of the screen showing that one station is in operation. And of course we can stop at any time by pressing the stop button. But instead, we'll move on to the next station by turning the page. And we can do that by pressing the top right arrow button, which will move us over to station number two. Since station one is still operating, I'll get a dialog box letting me know this, but I'll say yes, I wanna continue and start station number two. Station two begins to operate and of course we can begin to make changes below as needed, continuing to do this station by station. Now you might have noticed the orange place button at the top left of the screen. This button is a convenient way of placing the station location asset in sitemap, a feature we introduced a few versions ago. Let me show you how it works. I'm gonna press the place button and when it does, it opens up sitemap and zooms in to our site. The station location asset marks where irrigation is expected to occur when that station is in operation. In this example, we'll say that you can expect to see watering occurring in this area next to the park. I'm happy with where it is now, so I'll press the place button at the bottom of the screen. We're asked to assign this to a controller in a station, so I'll assign this to the OptiFlow 2 controller, then I'll select station number two. We could add photos to this station location asset, but we'll do that at a later time. For now, I'll just press save. And the station location asset is now placed. When we return to the station programming page, the place button has become the view button. If I press the view button, it will open up sitemap and then take us directly to the newly placed station location asset, where we can interact with it as need be. When we return back to the station page, you'll see that a new icon has appeared for station number two. The little map marker pin indicates that a station location asset has been placed for this station. And over time, you'll see more and more of these as you place them. Here's an example of what that might look like. Lastly, let's take a look at the program tab. And on the program tab, we've added an overview page for each of the programs for that particular controller. This way you know in advance which stations make up that program before manually operating them. Let's take a look at program C. I'll press the program C overview page button. We're presented with an overview of how that program is set up in WeatherTrack Central, but we also see a list underneath of the stations that make up that program. Now that we know this, let's return and select program C's timer button. But let's change the default time by going up to the top of the row and selecting six minutes. I'll then press start and watering will begin. The name of the station that's operating is listed in the program button, but you can always press the currently watering bar at the bottom and also see what's operating. We've made it easier to determine which version number of WeatherTrack Mobile you're using by going to the question mark support icon button at the top right of the screen. There, also at the top right of the screen, 
you'll see the version number of the WeatherTrack mobile app you're currently using. There are even more exciting features coming in future WeatherTrack mobile updates, and we can't wait to share them with you. So stay tuned, and we'll see you next time.